I can't say this is a typical week, but this is a week in the life of me. This week started off with pottery. I was back after six weeks and back like I never left, okay? Slanging pots, building things. I can't wait to see how these four pieces turn out. All right, so I am cooking dinner. I'm gonna make some tostones, avocado. I don't have queso fresco, so, or cotija. Uh, I'll be using feta because that's what I got um, and then some kale avocado and I think that's just gonna have to do it you know we're going this way we're going this way yes let's go just chill out for a second Oh, that's a good sit. Good sit. All right, let's go. We are headed to the dog wash. Um, these filthy dogs have not been getting their monthly bath on the first of the month just because I've been away. So they are disgusting. My car is disgusting. They are shedding like nobody's business. So we are going to head over to the self dog wash and get them clean. Get them clean. They're disgusting. Okay, so boom. I don't know if you knew this about me, but I used to manage a pet resort. So this whole dog washing thing is my jam. Like I have strategies, I have ways that I like to do it, that they are like optimal clean and dry. So I just want to tell you a story. There is one client that I had and the dog's name was Falco and he was a German Shepherd and his owners always chose me and asked for me because I was the only one who would give this German Shepherd a really, really, really good blow drying him and I had on goggles and a surgery cap and I was like it's a hurricane out here and I was like doing the weather report for the day with Falco and the blow dryer and German Shepherd just everywhere it was so much fun but that's pretty much exactly what happens with Nadia still um <laughs> I was wearing my bonnet so I didn't get the hair all in my locks and I always do a pre-clean because I feel so bad for creating so much hair in this self dog wash. So I am always cleaning up after us before the other people. Jesus. Do. And the baby's got a treat afterwards. Right now, finally back at my desk, um, we are on the final day of the Cowgirl Cameron and the Funky Fleece fiasco Kickstarter. I just looked this morning um, from this morning's uh, update email. We have reached $3,171 of a $2,500 goal. So I am pumped. Yesterday I said I was calling $3,000 into the atmosphere and we have hit that this morning. I believe it is, what, like 128% uh, funded. Absolutely thrilled. I am so thankful. I'm so excited. Um, so I am going to write a update to the backers just before, before everything is all said and done. Um, I'm going to give them an update, let them know that they only have eight hours left. Um, yeah, it closes at midnight tonight. So eight hours left, um, to share, um, adjust, you know, maybe they want to go up a reward tier. Um, so yeah, this Kickstarter for the first one has been... I'm pumped. I'm so thankful. I'm so excited. Um, and yeah, 
ready to ready to get the party started with a fully funded campaign okay for my first one i'm just like so thankful um yeah one of the things that is on my to-do list for i really need to give myself a better deadline but i'm gonna say this week um is to get back into a course I have about Facebook, Meta, and Amazon ads and get something started for Cowgirl Cameron. Um, because I really need to just rip the Band-Aid off and get over my fear of wasting money and start running ads for, uh, for it. Just running ads for it. I, I need to start. <laughs> For the website, for uh, ads going to the Amazon, you know, I just, I need to get it all together. So I'm, I will do a separate video on self-publishing and getting the book out to the masses and how I might try to do it a little bit differently. But um, yeah, here we go. I'm in a Facebook group for Kickstarters and someone mentioned that my $2,500 Kickstarter goal was ambitious for a first time Kickstarter. But I know my Barnyard besties, I know my community, we exceeded that goal and I'm just so, so thankful. So today I have been going through the orientation information for the 1 million black w women black in business program to Goldman Sachs. Told you I got into that. Um, I'm kind of nervous. I, I want to be careful about how I describe what I'm feeling because I don't want that to turn into a a narrative clearly I've been eating um, I don't want that to turn into a narrative that I hold on to it's not that I am um, nervous or anxious I'm just kind of anticipatory and like I can from what has been requested so far I can feel the rigor and as someone who is a forever student and a procrastinate educator, I am like, here we go. <laughs> and preparing for this program prompted me to get caught up on my bookkeeping for this year um, because we have to provide uh, P&Ls or some sort of financial statements for the last six months. And getting caught up and seeing my P&Ls, I'm like, Wait a second, girl. Like, the beliefs you had about your business aren't really that true because look at the numbers. So, that makes me feel pretty good. That makes me feel pretty good, actually. Um, in about three minutes, we are going to... Um, have the next webinar uh, i think it's like the last webinar before out before we go to new york next week on monday and i'll be vlogging about that um and yeah i'm excited to you know understand the the list of things that we have to do um there is a program checklist and i just logged into the online platform online learning platform Lord, look at my dog. She's playing with toys. The old lady still like to play. Precious baby. Um, but yeah, we got some stuff to do. Um, we have to do an entrepreneur. Lord have mercy. We have to do an entrepreneurship readiness test. Um gather the data that we need for orientation and then read a case study. Um, so we have to identify competitors, 
um, outline our products or services and price points, um, review current marketing strategies and their results, write a target customer description, um, outline current business challenges, uh, identify future business opportunities, and then review like the last six months of our financials. So this is real. Like it's, it's real, real, real. I think, you know, I just, I have to say this out loud for myself, but like, this is, this is real. And I'm so excited to be so much more intentional about how I'm creating instead of letting my business happen to me. I feel like that's a lot of what was before was just letting the business happen to me and just in grind mode and not actually stepping out of it and being top down and looking at how I want to do things differently. So I'm really excited about that. And all right, the webinar is about to start. So I'll see you in a second. <laughs> I can't wait to see everyone in NYC in a few days. Thank you so much for your kind attention and for joining us. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful um, rest of the day. Good morning. Happy Friday. I had to run to the grocery store this morning because I'm back at my parents and I needed to get dog food for the dogs. And I'm like, mine as well. This is this is a grocery store run. Dogs, horses. <laughs> You big one. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then, oh, okay. 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 All right. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. How was that? Good morning. Initial breakfasts. My goodness. ASMR carrot eating. My baby. My baby. <laughs> There's no more. I, didn't, I don't have no more. You get some more later. You get some more later. You're going to get a bath. And you got work to do today. You're going to get a bath. Would you like to say good morning? Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> this is not a, t a treat. All right. Al Gore is getting his morning bath, his pre visit bath. We're going to wash his mane. We got time to date. We got time to wash the mane to date, buddy. We got time. Sometimes I don't wash his mane if we only have like two hours because it takes forever to dry. But um, yeah, we're going to visit a school in Cary. And a lot of times, you know, people will be like, oh, they're farm animals. They know that they're dirty. Um, so why clean them before a visit? Um, first of all, um, when you are introducing kids or parents to something new, you kind of have to think about the experience with all of the senses, all five senses, right? Smell, sight, sound, uh, and touch. Not really taste because we're not tasting anything but I want to make sure that the kids have a positive experience and if they pet him and it's like gross and gunky that's not positive and also I have to do a lot of um, petting and, and you know just keeping my hands on him and stuff and then possibly signing books everything like that and I don't want my hands to be full of gunk and disgusting also it's just it doesn't make for a positive experience for anybody so 
when I'm going somewhere, you know, I could see if I was on the farm, on a farm and, and people were coming to a farm, you know, that's one thing. But if I'm going out into the public and as an author, I'm trying to multitask, not only with <laughs> holding on for, but um, doing things as an author, signing books, taking payments, things like that. If I don't have any help, I need for it to be as seamless as possible. And so taking the extra effort in the beginning to um, make sure that he's clean is so much easier. So much easier than having to deal with it after the fact deal with a dirty boat. Okay. Those legs white.
another 10 minutes. Oops. You ever had that kid that just will do what you ask, but in their own way? Just because that's who they are? Hmm, it kind of sounds like me. Well, that's that one. Come here. Come on. Look, you don't even see the carrot. He says, I will go where I please. You cannot tell me what to do. Look at him. See, look at him. He just know everything. And he's looking for his brother because he's like, what the heck? I'm in here by myself. Yeah. Oh, you saw the other hay that I dropped. I guess you don't want this carrot. I've been carrying around this carrot I'm trying to get you. He just knows that it's time for him to... Alright, we just gonna put it right there. Since you just know everything. We are off to the races. <laughs> I couldn't even get the pun out because it's so stupid. Um, but we are off headed to... I've heard that this place is called Thales, not Thales. Thales Academy um, in Holly Springs to be the um, mystery reader for this week. So I guess it's a program that they do where they have mystery readers um, come in and we are going to set up in the uh, carpool area and the kids will be able to come out and listen to a cowgirl Cameron story and meet Encore. So, it should be a good time. Such an awesome visit. We had four classes of kindergartners, like a hundred kids. It was ah, they were so cute and they were so engaged and had so many stories to tell. Um, and they did so well petting Encore. Oh my gosh, I love that! I love that so much. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I can't wait to go back.